And if we pull this away temporarily, let's pull that away, you'll see that um, it has an open side uh, from where it was taken from. And now that it's been taken away, we could then extrude and manipulate this piece uh, to our heart's content without worrying about affecting the original geometry. So, uh, for example, um, I might use the slicing plane on this and let's rotate our slicing plane around. Let's use the rotate tool. I'll grab uh, one of the axes and uh, why this might matter is, let's say, not that this makes sense as a building, but let's say we want to shave off the lower portion of this and otherwise, if this would have remained here, it would have cut through the rest of uh, the geometry. So I had rotated the slicing plane, and then once it's positioned, you click on Slice. Okay, you've noticed that I've got additional topological features that have been introduced now because of that. Let's let go of the slicing plane. Now that these polygons have been introduced, it's easy for us to select them and then remove them. I'm going to simply just delete them for right now. Okay, so next what needs to happen is I've got to um, close this guy back up here and I'm missing a polygon. Now there's lots of ways to go about this. Um, I could make a copy of the polygon on the top, flip it around, and then manipulate it into place. Why don't we try that um, as a first pass? So I'll grab the polygon here on the top and we'll just simply hold down shift and move a copy away. Okay, so I've created a copy of the top of this. This is going to be cloned to elements, so it'll remain inside this little poly mesh here. Now that I have this polygon, I want to rotate it around and put it up in uh, to the underside of my geometry here. Um, now, why does it matter that it's rotated around? Right now, currently, the normal for this is facing down because I've just rotated it away. If I would have attached it up in here with the normal facing up, then this polygon wouldn't have worked for lighting and rendering. Now, that's uh, entirely fixable, uh, but it's just something you need to be aware of. And how do we know that something needs to be fixed? Uh, we'll take a look at that as well. Okay, so I'm just doing this really cheap and dirty here to get it in place, but once we have it, um, then we can just simply play the game of connect the dots. So I'll move to the point topological level and we're going to grab the individual vertex of, of each of the sides of this and snap them up to the underside of this geometry. I'll turn on my 3D snap and we'll make sure it's set to vertex and I'll click and drag this point up into place. Let's grab the next point and put it up into place and so forth until they're all right where we want them to be. Okay, so why am I doing this? Well, there is a tool called Cap Holes and we could use that to now cap this in hole. But cap Hole doesn't like a hole that bends around a face. It doesn't know how to handle that. So you're going to have to take some caution um, if you end up with results like this um, where you can have sort of a mix of building geometries and then also using the cap hole tool. Okay, so now that this is in place, it's not done. Um, all of these vertexes uh, need to be welded. So I've selected them all and if we look under the edit geometries, we can see a place where it says um, edit vertices. We find weld. Of course, once again, there is the weld button, but there is also the weld settings window. And I find this preferable because you can actually see how many before and how many after and we know that four should be disappearing so this is exactly right and I'm going to click um, OK and now that this geometry has been welded together uh, we shouldn't have any problems with that side of it. Next I need to move this guy back into place and let's do that just uh, simply using the move tool and snapping from point to point. Now those two aren't joined just yet and we once again have a hole that needs to be fixed. Now this hole could easily be remedied with a cap hole, but we could also create polygons. And so let's take a look at how we can create polygons right inside the edit uh, geometry tools here. And you'll see in the face level that there is a create tool. And create work is going to work best if we also have the snap turned on. So I have my 3D snap set to vertex and I'm using the create and it's just click, click
click, 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 and right click. And there we go, we have a polygon now that's been generated, normal facing out to us. Now, just as before, this needs to be welded into place. Now, I'm going to have to do some welding again when I reattach this back to the rest of my geometry. So I'm going to wait before doing that. I'm going to go ahead and do my attaching first and do my welding um, after the fact. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and use from here the attach tool. We'll go ahead and click attach. And we just have our original box out there. Now we've got it all joined back together into one poly mesh. I'm going to select my vertex. I'm going to grab uh, the vertices that I want to weld. It doesn't really matter if we grab them all or some of them. It will basically follow through with this um, over the entire geometry. Let's pull down inside our edit geometries to where we find edit vertex again. We'll use weld. Uh, we should find um, one, two, three, four. Well, we've got five here. So interesting. Uh, so we have this and this should go away three, four, five, and those two um, maybe are already welded as part of this being uh, created. So let's go ahead and attempt that. That does make sense. And we'll go ahead and click OK. And one way to confirm that this does make sense is we can see, is there still an element in here? No. Uh, is uh, this going to be distorted if we grab, let's say, uh, or pulled apart if we grab the polygon on the end and attempt to pull this. No, it's still all held together. That's good. Now, uh, one last test might be to pull this polygon away. And yeah, we do have an opening in here. So why is that the case? Well, because there's no additional topological feature on this segment for those two points to weld to. And uh, it could be the case that you need to introduce an extra topological feature here. So this segment, that segment, and the vertex beyond does weld onto this. Um, it could also be the case that it's not entirely necessary. But let's just say for the sake of knowing that um, we do want to have an extra feature there. And once again, this is a very simply accomplished by using the slicing tool. So let's use quick slice and make sure our snap is turned on. In this case, I'm going to go from midpoint to midpoint. That seems like a logical location for this. Midpoint to here. And yes, we have vertex also. And let's do the same on the opposite side of the geometry. Let's select here. And I'll use my quick slice tool and go from vertex to midpoint. And let's let go of that. And now that we have introduced those extra topological features, if we should go to weld, we should find that yes, two points will now go away with that welding, okay. And now if we grab this face here in the front and go to reposition it, we won't find this being pulled apart. We see that it's all welded together as one cohesive unit. In fact, uh, you know, maybe that's kind of an interesting outcome. Okay, so there's some basic steps inside of low poly modeling uh, inside 3D Studio Max.